Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill Official Introduction Part 1 Burning Desire In this recording you will see how thoughts are things, how they manifest in physical reality, what is the importance of the burning desire, what enabled Edwin Barnes to make his dream come true, and cooperate with Edison. What is the role of having a definite major purpose? How important is determination to remain ready for a longer period of time? What is true desire and how to work with your desire or desire? Do you have a burning desire to make your dreams come true? Truly, thoughts are things, and powerful things at death, when they are mixed with defiedness of purpose, persistence and a burning desire for the translation into riches or other material objects. A little more than 30 years ago, Edwin C. Barnes discovered how true it is that men really do think and grow rich. His discovery did not come about at one sitting. It came little by little, beginning with a burning desire to become a business associate of the great Edison. On the screen you see Edwin C. Burns in his youth. One of the chief characteristics of Burns's desire was that it was definite. He wanted to work with Edison, not for him. Observe carefully the description of how he went about translating his desire into reality, and you will have a better understanding of the 13 principles which lead to riches. When this desire or impulse of thought first flashed into his mind, he was in no position to act upon it. Two difficulties stood in his way. He did not know Mr. Edison, and he did not have enough money to pay his railroad fare to Orange, New Jersey. These difficulties were sufficient to have discouraged the majority of men from making any attempt to carry out the desire. But his was no ordinary desire. He was so determined to find a way to carry out his desire that he finally decided to travel by blind baggage rather than be defeated. To the uninitiated, this means that he went to East Orange on a freight train. He presented himself at Mr. Edison's laboratory and announced he had come to go into business with the inventor. In speaking of the first meeting between Barnes and Edison la years later, Mr. Edison said, He stood there before me, looking like an ordinary Trump, but there was something in the expression of his face which conveyed the impression that he was determined to get what he had come after. I had learned from years of experience with men that when a man really desires a thing so deeply that he is willing to stake his entire future on a single turn of the wheel in order to get it, he is sure to win. I gave him the opportunity he asked for. Because I saw he had made up his mind to stand by until he succeeded. Subsequent events proved that no mistake was made. Just what young Burns said to Mr. Edison on that occasion was far less important than that which he thought. If the significance of this statement could be conveyed to every person who reads it, there would be no need for the reminder of this book. Barnes did not get his partnership with Edison 
on his first interview. He did get a chance to work in the Edison offices at a very nominal wage, doing work that was so unimportant to Edison, but most important to Burns, because it gave him an opportunity to display his merchandise where his intended partner could see it. Months went by, apparently nothing happened to bring the coveted goal which Barnes had set up in his mind as his definite major purpose. But something important was happening in Barnes's mind. He was constantly intensifying his desire to become the business associate of Edison. Psychologists have correctly said that when one is truly ready for a thing, it puts in its appearance. Burns was ready for a business association with Edison. Moreover, he was determined to remain ready until he got that which he was seeking. Maybe young Burns did not know it at the time, but his bulldog determination his persistence in standing back of a single desire was destined to mow down all opposition and bring him the opportunity he was seeking. When the opportunity came, it appeared in a different form and from a different direction than Burns had expected. That is one of the tricks of opportunity. It has a sly habit of slipping in by the back door, and often it comes disguised in a form of misfortune or temporary defeat. Perhaps this is why so many fail to recognize opportunity. Mr. Edison had just perfected a new office device known at the time as the Edison Dictating Machine. Now, the Ediphone. His salesmen were not enthusiastic over the machine. They did not believe it could be sold without great effort. Burns saw his opportunity. It had crawled in quietly, hidden in a queer-looking machine which interested no one but Burns and the inventor. Burns knew he could sell the Edison dictating machine. He suggested this to Edison and promptly got his chance. He did sell the machine. In fact, he sold it so successfully that Edison gave him a contract to distribute and market it all over the nation. Out of that business association grew the slogan made by Edison and installed by Burns. The Business Alliance has been in operation for more than 30 years. Out of it, Burns has made himself rich in money, but he has done something infinitely greater. He has proved that one really may think and grow rich. Burns literally fought himself into a partnership with the great Edison. He fought himself into a fortune he had nothing to start with except the capacity to know what he wanted and the determination to stand by that desire until he realized it. He had no money to begin with, he had but little education, he had no influence, but he did have initiative, faith and the will to win. With these intangible forces, he made himself number one man with the greatest inventor who ever lived. This is for the book. Now I want you to ask yourself below questions, the questions that now I will say 
referring to your desire. What is your attitude to dreams? What are you striving for? Do you keep a burning desire? Do you persevere or maybe you look for quick and easy solutions? Do you recognize the seemingly ordinary things as opportunities? Think deeply about those things. Can't you see that many of them may bring an answer to your past desire?